Well, all right, you guys. Um, I'm running out of time. The market's about to open. So I'm going to do this video on MMTLP. It's, it's going to be, I, I hope, pretty short and sweet. Walking through Washington, D.C. Look how beautiful it is. This is, uh, down here is the Tabard Inn. Anyway, on MMTLP, here's my dog. And he's taking a long time getting home today. The last two days it's been wet here, so he doesn't want to go home. So I'm sorry, I'm not doing a more professional uh, time life vid video. Um, MMTLP. I believe what you need to do is, and this isn't financial advice, it's just, it, it's for not for nothing my advice, uh, or my observation, but it's not, you have to make your own uh, uh, decisions, of course, and only you know your situation. But today is the record date if, by settlement, by settlement. So the record date's Monday, but if you're buying the shares today, you get you T plus two, you get the qualification uh, as owning the stock on the record date, Monday. From what I understand, Tuesday it it's out of business. So then you're gonna be stressed out. Well, do I have to sell today? And then my answer is no, you don't have to sell today. And they're gonna put all sorts of stresses on you to sell. And so I can summarize my recommendation, which is um, they're gonna try to get you to sell down here. Why don't you just say like in a poker game, you know, F it, I'm going all in. I'm going all in. You know you're taking some risk, but go all in. The stock right now is trading at $7. MMTLP. It has 165 million shares uh, out uh, trading. It has a limit of 200 million shares in exist, you know, outstanding in existence. They, let me put it a different way. The company, there's another 35 million shares they could issue, but I don't think they're going to. So there's a hundred and, you know, in other words, if the shorts came and said, hey, we'll give you. Uh, a bunch of money could you issue those shares they're not going to do that so there's 165 million shares I t I, I uh, twittered it last night late at night but if you assume on the Ora Grande field and the hazel and all of the advances that I'm gonna use a name out of the air but let's say a an Exxon would be willing to to buy uh, uh, new bridge hydrocarbons well you, just using simple arithmetic, arithmetic what I came up with was, was um, three and a half billion barrels of oil in place uh, maybe see the problem is that's that's not a hundred percent sure <laughs> but um, and there's natural gas there that's why I, I use 3.5 billion I multiplied it by five dollars so in other words, Exxon would be willing to pay $5 in cash and securities to, um, I'm, and I'm just making up Exxon as a name, uh, uh, cash and securities to own it. What's in it for Exxon? Well, Exxon got out of the whole Texas area when they sold at a pretty good price, actually. They sold to um, XTO years ago. So they don't have a big footprint there. Well, one thing Exxon would get is a footprint. And the other thing Exxon would get is the ability to tell people they have added to their reserves 3.5 billion. They also get a platform where they can start buying additional acreage in that, in that play. So there's a lot of reasons for Exxon to want to, to, want to uh, uh, establish this trade. Um, so anyway, if you take $5, whether it's cash, stock, or, or, or a combination, and you divide it by 165 million, I came up with $100 a share, 
as the valuation. And uh, uh, as a private company. Now just listen to what I uh, hear what that means. It might be because there's a bit of a, of a buying frenzy by the big boys. Um, it might be that that kind of a deal's already in place with, with whomever. This asset was for sale six, seven, eight years ago. And, and I knew of it then. And I was looking at it, although more tangentially than, I'm, you know, I'm not a, a big wheel like Exxon or something. And I was unsuccessful finding money for it. But um, during that time, I would think a new field discovery of that magnitude, a way, a way that Exxon or somebody else could just make a statement, we're back in on the continental United States, uh, would be huge. So what it could happen right away. Now, if you go into the private company, you're going to you're going to find yourself saying, "Well, I can't sell." But but what if there's a transaction, let's say within six months or sooner? All of a sudden, you're liquid. Okay. So what does it mean from here? Well, the stock is six dollars, or it, I just looked in the pre-market. They they have it down there to scare you. But call it eight dollars. Call it ten dollars. Let's call it ten dollars right now. The, the value that I just calculated, which I admit is a wild ass guess, um, but it's a, I think it's a, you know, paying $5 in the ground for that kind of upside, and you, you are the technology leader, it, it, it makes sense. So anyway, that's $100. That's 10 to one. If I'm wrong, cut my number in half. It's five to one. If I'm wrong the other way, increase it. It's 15 to one, and you just have to wait six months. Now, emotionally, you wanna do something right now and you get out and all that. So my advice is, let's, let's be James, James Dean in that movie, playing chicken, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just hold it till Monday if we don't get our price today. And if you sell it tomorrow, you won't get the you won't get the uh, the dividend, but if you and, and and same with Monday, but you might get the nice price. You know what if you can get out at five hundred or six hundred or a thousand dollars a share? Uh, those are just projections, not financial advice. Um, then it makes sense. But in my assessment, in my assessment, this is DC. Um, there used to be a there used to be a YMCA there. Now there's office buildings. Um, in my assessment, your your gambit today is all right. I'm going to sell if I get the nice price. I have my orders in, but if they're going to do all sorts of uh, shorting and computerized selling, and and uh, the SEC is going to continue to look the other way, and uh, you know effete, ineffectual Gary Gensler is going to look out uh, for Goldman Sachs instead of doing what uh, uh, he's there for. He'll go down in, in history and in infamy rather than as a hero. How many of you guys remember any other? Uh, uh, just name two people from the FBI. Just quickly. I'll give you one second. Two. You have to come up with two. I know the first one you, you came up with, J. Ed, J. Edward Hoover. Of course, you might have said James Comey, uh, who went to my school. Um, but in history. All right, you said J. Edward Hoover. Who's the other one? You remember Elliot Ness. If, if, if Gary Gensler wants to be remembered and go down in history, so that generations speak about him, he should be focusing on stock settlement, not on not on these just fluff, fluffery of the rules he's trying to change in front of Congress. He needs to address the stock settlement and the naked short selling, the counterfeiting of U.S. Uh, stock shares 
that's destroying the entire financial system of the United States. The, uh, uh, the only way, as, as Gary Gensler said, he's going to root out fraud everywhere, anywhere. Um, of course, that, he was talking about Kim Kardashian when he said that. But the only way to root out fraud, and, and as Gabar Gawal said, level the playing field, is to issue monopoly money to the retail side of the market so that we can just endlessly buy stock, particularly when it's going up. We can just buy stock during the day and hold it a couple days. And then we can promise to make our money good in 35 days. And oh, hey. So anyway, I, I, I just got off track there a little bit. But if Gary Gensler wants to go down as someone people remember his name fondly, they sh he should uh, act on MMTLP. But he won't. He won't. His paymaster is Goldman Sachs ultimately, because he wants you know. Anyway, well, enough said about that. So today you have um, you have. Uh, uh, a deadline for regular way settlement and if you want to buy the stock MMTLP selling it you don't have to sell it today you can sell it uh, from what I understand you can sell it um, tomorrow and Monday and the new buyer will get your ultimately eventually will get your distribution. It won't be regular way settlement. So if you don't get the price you want today, I think you stand to make a lot more money just braving it out and going into the private company. Um, now you may ask, and I'm gonna I'm gonna end this very quickly, you may ask, well what happens if if 300 million shares go into the private company and there's only 165 million available and I would say exactly that's the problem exactly um, in my judgment what will happen let's just say there's a quick transaction uh, to use my example of Exxon and let's say Exxon buys it the way I just said but it'll take a little while you, there'll be lawsuits <laughs> there'll be lawsuits and uh, um, probably the value will go up. But at a minimum, I think the DTCC will step in and pay in my, you know, my sort of simplistic example, pay each of you maybe $100 a share. So I, I don't, I know there's a lot of uh, pratfalls, pitfalls possible. But I don't see the value in panicking out of this stock today, Monday, or, or um, uh, sorry, today, Friday, or Monday. Uh, we are where we are. It's, it's somehow they're able to keep it under $8, $10 with Gary Gensler's uh, uh, assist. So how, to me, how do you justify selling something at $8 just to get your money back when if you waited 90 days, six months, you might get 100 or 150? And, and look at it this way. At least you won't be trading it, so you won't be losing it. It'll be there. So anyway, I wish you all the best. I'm going to leave it at that. My bottom line recommendation is, is, is be Jimmy Dean. Don't show fear, uh, play chicken, keep driving right at them, and uh, 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 unless you get, I don't know, you pick your price, unless you get, and you should always take your money off the table if you get a decent price, take a little bit of money off the table. But, you know, if you, if you could sell 10%, 20% of your shares, get your original money off, then you, you, you play the dividend for free. But I really think this stock needs to be in 10, 20, 30, 40, 80, 100 range, 500 range, 
to make sense to sell for me. Um, I, I'd rather have the private company. It'll be a good private company. Anyway, that's it. Cheers. Um, talk at you later.